Engineering biology is poised to transform uh, virtually any sector of our economy. From healthcare and food to energy and environment, it holds promise for producing more sustainable and efficient products and services. At the heart of engineering biology is biological design. This is our ability to generate or create the building blocks of life such as DNA, proteins, and cells. But more importantly, to create them in reproducible, uh, responsible, and predictable manner, and also at scale. And this is essential to address the persistent challenges we face these days from sustainable manufacturing to antimicrobial resistance. Another question you may have, why bother with harnessing biology at all? So the answer is twofold. First of all, biology has enormous capacity to exploit. And secondly, it's our readiness to exploit it. Take DNA as an example. Uh, everybody knows that DNA is a molecule that instructs life. However, it can be used for purposes that have nothing to do with biology. We now know that DNA can be used to write books, uh, video games, or catalog the entire British Library. We also know that one gram of DNA, which is the size of a sugar cube, can store many millions copies of any Hollywood movie. And those copies would survive thousands of years. This fit is unachievable for the magnetic storage devices currently used, which need replacing every 10, 20 years. However, much of this promise stumbles upon one particular thing, is our capacity or limited capacity to write DNA itself. There is a certain literacy gap between our abilities to read and write DNA, which has to be addressed first before we proceed and progress further. And in PL, we're addressing this problem by establishing the limits of de novo DNA synthesis, which is writing DNA from scratch uh, rather than extracting uh, chunks of written DNA from an organism. So we first perform a study to understand the development trajectory of DNA synthesis over the next 10 years, and we established that there are indeed common trends and gaps in existing and emerging DNA synthesis technologies that should be addressed. And all of these gaps and trends, they call for the same thing, the development of DNA standards that can be used to cross-compare those technologies to improve them. A the partial solution does to this problem that we currently pursue is to create these DNA standards, which we call DNA length standards, and they will allow to score the efficiency with which DNA is produced or synthesized versus the length of DNA produced up to the genomic sizes, which are fairly large DNA molecules. Of course, an ultimate solution is to produce DNA that will have a meaningful function, whether it's biological or non-biological, but ideally, of course, it's the function that can help address a global challenge, such as antimicrobial resistance. In this vein, we discovered by design uh, minimalist phages uh, that have antimicrobial action or activity. Um, they also combine the best of the two worlds, antibiotics that are, we are very familiar with, and bacteriophages, emerging antimicrobial therapies. These are the viruses that infect bacteria specifically. However, unlike those two worlds, our phages, they carry no undesirable genes or toxins, as bacteriophages would do. They are not subject to antibiotic resistance, unlike antibiotics, and they pose no threat to human immune system. Synthetic DNA standards were needed yesterday. The urgency remains, so does the pressure to produce them. The impact is far-reaching and universal across different fields, from data storage to cancer treatments. Encouragingly, companies and researchers around the world, and in particular in this country, they do develop and innovate new DNA synthesis technologies that overcome or circumvent the limitations of the current DNA synthesis capabilities. However, they like a means for comparison, and this is what DNA standards can deliver and achieve. Synthetic genomes are very attractive uh, these days, simply because they have no functional redundancy. Those are the genes that are designed to support particular functions, and otherwise our function is sterile. Whether this milestone is indeed useful and at all possible or achievable has yet to be seen. However, we believe that 
uh, minimalist genomes, as small even as the ones that encode for our phages, can solve the problem of antimicrobial resistance in a way or in a manner the humankind and nature can accept.